even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Praise God, praise God. What a beautiful text. Amen. And I read it and I think about how that John the Apostle, there's so many things we're going to look into here about the city of Laodicea that very possibly John the Apostle didn't know but the Spirit of God was speaking to the church. Amen. And he speaks to us today. And he knows how to connect with us and, and help us to understand. He knows where we're at and what he needs to say to speak into our needs and into our lives. Hallelujah. And he's going to still do that today. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's talk. I want to share this story with you concerning Pastor Roy. Roy taught his first Sunday school class at the age of nine. He attended a thousand-member church in Monahans, Texas, and by age 15, he was the permanent teacher of the nine-year-old Sunday school class. At age 18, Roy attended an after-school class and participated in math declamation and persuasive speaking competitions. He met Carolyn, who invited him to her church. Roy was uncomfortable when he went because there were quite unlike what he thought church was supposed to be. He didn't plan on going back, but in his own words, he said, something got a hold of me. <laughs> Amen. How many times have we heard that or felt that? Praise the Lord. I know he got a hold of me one day. Amen. He still got a hold of me today. Praise the Lord. He goes on. He's committed to an intense, he committed to an intense study of the Bible. Through prayer and study, God revealed to Roy his need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Then during revival services, Roy received the Holy Ghost. Roy never imagined the impact the Holy Ghost would have on his life. He responded to a call to preach, withdrew from his aerospace engineering program, and within four years started a new church plant. Many challenges arose, but Roy did not allow himself to be stagnant. He persisted in opening himself to God's will and choosing an unbroken relationship with Jesus. Roy Moss pastored in Bartlesville, Oklahoma for 46 years. Truth Tabernacle, United Pentecostal Church, is still a thriving church today because the Lord reached for Roy and he responded. Isn't that a great story, great testimony? Praise God. God is still getting a hold of hearts, amen, and transforming them. Praise God. Okay, here's another little news story here. According to Yahoo News Singapore, on September 15, 2017, a man was sentenced to 70 weeks in jail for cheating pawn shops. Five other similar charges were also taken into consideration. Court documents showed the convicted man had been approached by a nightclub owner with an opportunity to see uh, some, uh, to get some extra cash. The plan was simple. The nightclub owner had some gold bars he wanted to, the man to help him pawn for a 20% commission. And the con was that each gold bar had only cost $900 but could easily be sold for much more. Why? Because it closely resembled, undetected to most people, the, the Perth Mint in Australia, which would greatly increase the value of it, but he was, it wasn't actually worth that. It just looked like it. And so each bar was only... 50% gold in reality. They thought it was up in the 90s. Uh, because the pawn shop was less discerning than real gold traders, the man was able to successfully pawn a few bars off as if they were 99% gold. It is estimated that he eventually cheated pawn shops out of $42,900. Think about that sinking feeling it must have been to, to the pawn shop owners when they discovered they had been conned. Amen. And, uh, how many, I've had that feeling before. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't want it to happen again. Amen. The enemy of our soul regularly cons Christians by getting them to buy into religion rather than a genuine sold-out relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's the truth. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share that again. It says, the enemy of our soul regularly cons Christians by getting them to buy into man-made religion rather than a genuine sold out relationship with Jesus Christ. And the Bible speaks of true religion. There is a true religion. It's not a denomination or some man-made title. It's a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. That is obtained by this description here, being having a sold out relationship with him. And that's what God's called us to. Amen. To to walk in his purity and to walk in the way that he wants because we of our relationship. 
that we've been established with him. Praise God. To know him is to know eternal life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Okay, so to the angel of the church of the Laodicea. For some reason, our remote's not working. In the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation, Jesus asked John to deliver special words to seven churches in Asia Minor. One of the strongest admonitions given to any of the churches was given to this one, the church of Laodicea. It serves as a clear indication as to how God feels about religion, which is marked by spiritual pride and apathy. Once again, we're talking about man-made religion, man's impression. It's man's it's his tendency, humanity, men and women, to have this tendency toward ritualism and traditionalism and to get into a rut of routine. And we do that in our prayer lives, and that's when it inhibits us and restricts us. We just go through the motions again, or we have certain phrases that we just repeat from the, from the mind and not really from the heart. Amen. There's nothing wrong with repeat, repeating things, but they need to come from the heart of a sincere cry unto God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it serves as an indication as to how God feels about religion, which is marked by spiritual pride and apathy. After reminding the church of Laodicea of his power and faithfulness, in verse 14, then he gives them a very specific message continuing from that point that we covered and read just a few minutes ago throughout to verse 22. So with some of the previous churches, the Lord adapted his words something, to something significant about the city which the assembly was located. We see that many times. We see it through the preaching and teaching of Jesus Christ, how he would relate with those stories to, to sheep and goats and to uh, the woman with the lost coin, uh, you know, the, 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 the uh, dealer in, in pearls, great pearls. People, things people related to and understood, you know, tax collectors and, and the Pharisees. Something they knew about and connected with. God still, the Holy Ghost still leads us in that way today and uses that in today. Amen. There's no exception here with the, the city of Laodicea. It was known for its wealth and its manufacturing of a special eye salve as well as a glossy black wool cloth. Think about that. And he mentions, if you recall in our reading, we'll see more, these things that, that he said that we need to do. We need to put on white raiment, he said, and anoint our eyes with eye salve. Amen. And then about being hot or cold, uh, Laodicea was also located near Heriopolis, famous for its hot springs, and Colossae, which is known for its pure cold water. So all these things you know, we see that actually had application in those that lived in Laodicea. And my thought was, I don't know for sure. We don't have any evidence to know for sure that John knew those items were all taking place in Laodicea or not. But the Holy Ghost sure knew. Amen. We know then see that that occurred. Okay. So... Anyhow, in verse 15, the Lord began by reminding them he knows not only the minds and thoughts of people, but he knows their hearts. I mean, he knows God knows our heart. He sees our heart, he said. Amen. Man looks on the outside, but God looks upon the heart, he said. Amen. He reads our heart like a book. And this is the thing we need to understand, even no matter how, many, how long we walk with God. He knows our heart better than we know ourselves. Amen. Praise God. No man knows the heart is what the Bible says. Amen. And God put the world in the heart of man. And it becomes a distraction and, and a blockage to us discerning what's really in our hearts. Amen. But God knows it. He knows how to help us get where he wants us to go and uh, have his will in our heart. Amen. So because of this, God is the only one qualified to judge anyone's heart. We see the outward evidence, but we can't see the heart. So we cannot rely on uh, achievements or accumulation of wealth for affirmation or to prove that doesn't prove spirituality by any means and it's important that we recognize that there's a whole lot of voices on christian media uh that promote that wealth is godliness and we know the bible plainly says that's not the truth god can bless you with wealth and god did, i believe he wants to bless us with wealth. he will only give us as much as he knows we can handle without backsliding Amen. <laughs> so if, we, if you really, once again, if you have that in your mind, prepare your heart for God's will and God will prosper us when he knows he can trust us with it. Is that all right? Can anybody say amen to that? Praise God. I really believe that's how God looks at those things. Amen. But they are not proof of spirituality. Uh, we can't rely upon our own abilities and our own qualifications in the natural 
to somehow justify it. Some people think I'm a really good singer, so I should be able to sing in that church. Well, it takes more than just being a good singer. There's a lot of good singers in the world. There's a lot. Just people get up and be a good orator. That doesn't make them a preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. Only God knows a person's true works, and to be a true believer, he or she must be spiritually vulnerable and sensitive to him, opened up to his direction and his leading. Amen. So both history and scripture warn that people then and today have a tendency to reduce Christianity to a set of rules and rituals or ideals instead of embracing a dynamic, heartfelt relationship with the Lord. Amen. I think sometimes we fail to reflect that as much as we should in the church because that's absolutely the only way to walk into a fruitful ministry or work for God today is to have a heart that is truly yielded to the fullness of God's direction and his leading. Praise God. Amen. Embracing a strong relationship with him, that is a surrendering of our heart to him. And, and the full means, the fullest means we know that we can. Amen. And what we fail at, he'll work on. <laughs> Amen. I often have prayed, God, I want you to shine that light into the darkest areas of my heart. In that deep, dark corner that I don't even know what's there. Shine it in there, God, and clean it out for me. Help me to clean it out and be what you want it to be. Praise God. Amen. It's growing in relationship with him that causes that to happen. Nothing else can do it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So A.W. Tozer put it this way. Everywhere among Christ conservatives, we find persons who are Bible taught but not spirit taught. Think about that. We can't have one or the other. We got to have both. They conceive truth to be something they can grasp with the mind. It's a philosophical thing to many people. I mean, I've seen, I remember watching and listening to some Bible studies taught by people that didn't believe in Pentecost. And yet they, the congregation, they, he would say something out of the word and you can hear a awe and a hush going across the crowd. But they were being inspired intellectually only and not by the spirit. Amen. They were missing the full grasp of what God was trying to say. So there's nothing wrong and very, and, and, and quite contrary, it's very important to apply ourselves intellectually to the study of his word. But more importantly is to open up our hearts, amen, that the Holy Ghost can speak to us, reveal his ways, amen. We were, I was teaching somebody the other day, we know that you can't even comprehend many things in God without being spiritually transformed, amen. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they are spiritually discerned, amen. Hallelujah. So there's no truth apart from the Spirit. How about that statement? That's a great statement. Amen. We have to be yielded to the Spirit to grasp and to really apply the truth. You can't apply the truth without the Spirit. Amen. Because you can apply it to the carnal nature, and carnal nature is not going to go along with it. Amen. We need the Spirit to transform us. The most brilliant intellect may be imbecilic when confronted with the mysteries of God. I mean, you could be as scholarly as you can get, have your whole wall covered in, in degrees. It doesn't make you able to perceive of the things God reveals and wants to work in our lives. Amen. So we need more than that. Praise God. And it's still a mystery. Isn't that something how God does that? And it reminds me, I don't want to get too lost in this, but it reminds me of reading about where G they said to Jesus, if you're the Christ, show us plainly. Well, that's all he had been doing for years to that point, showing plainly by his actions that he was the Christ. But yet he spoke in parables so only the ones that were hungry those that wanted to know were willing to yield and learn of what god had only to them would it be revealed and god would make it known and he still does that today that's why we were talking about the tabernacle last week and the tabernacle from the outside it, it was not glamorous at all just a tent in the wilderness in the desert how could this be the access point to the god of creation to the outside, it doesn't look like anything. We may not appear to be much to this world, but we got the greatest treasure there is on the face of this earth. Hallelujah. In heaven and earth, amen, to know and live for Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's I know thy works. Okay, and I'm not going to ask for answers to this question, but you'll see why here in a second. He says, can you describe a time when God spoke to your heart through his word or through a sermon, book, or song? I dare say there should not be a single Christian that can't say, yes, I can describe a time. 
In fact, how could we even come to God if God had not spoken to our heart and made himself known unto us? Amen. But the thought that comes to my mind with this is how important is it, no matter how long you live for God, if you live for him 50 years, it's still very important that we approach his word with a desire for God to speak to our hearts. Amen. Be it coming to hear teaching or preaching, come with an expectancy. Come expecting God to speak. Amen. And I've said this before many times in, my, in the growth process. When I was young in the Lord, I had so many questions battling my mind. And I'll be praying about it when I come to church. God, I need to understand this. I want to say nothing to anybody about it. But in the message somewhere, my answer was presented to me. If you seek, you're going to find. Amen. But if we just skate along and let it, you know, well, whatever happens, happens. You're not going to get it. You have to desire it. Amen. God does speak to our hearts. Every time we hear a sermon, every time we open the Bible, expect God to speak to our hearts. And he does speak to our hearts through music as well and song and worship. Praise God. And that's important to desire and obtain as well. Hallelujah. Okay. So in Revelation 3, verses 15 through 16, God made it clear he's looking for people with a passion for him. Bottom line, he's looking for people with a passion for him. Apathy disqualifies people from being true Christians. You can't be a true Christian and be apathetic in our walk with God. That's what he's saying. Now, now let's be honest. I don't believe he's saying, I, I want you to be cold. That's not what he's saying. But he's saying it's worse to be lukewarm than to be cold. That's what he's saying there. Amen. He wants us all hot. He wants the fire to stay burning. Like we're teaching the tabernacle, that fire was never to go out. We kindle it every morning. We refuel it every morning and make sure we keep that fire burning. Praise God. Amen. But apathy disqualifies people from being true Christians. And we have that aspect of the teaching that says once saved, always saved. It's not the case. Amen. You can be born again, fully experiencing everything God has for salvation, and then walk away from it or just get cold in heart. Just get lukewarm even in heart and lose our relationship with God and lose the opportunity to make heaven our home. Amen. Praise God. Most people identify with an aversion to a limp handshake, a passionless kiss, or an empty promise, or a half-hearted commitment. They are, they are as pleasant as lukewarm coffee <laughs> or room temperature ice cream. That's really just, just a slushy, right? <laughs> <laughs> lukewarm faith offends God because it reveals one's true feelings. Amen. This is why we are called to examine ourselves continually and make sure we're in the faith. That is that we are a hot for God. Amen. That we have a fire burning for a desire to draw near to God, to be established and grow in a relationship with him. Amen. It's so essential to everything we're here to do in this church is to, to learn that place of walking with him in that way. Amen. Okay, so to make sure his point was crystal clear, God declared, So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yeah, that, that sounds like harsh language, and it is. And God uses that for a purpose and for a good reason. Amen. One must remember our relationship with God is eternal. Everything around us, so much of what we work for every single day throughout the week, are for temporary things and some very necessary for survival today. Amen. But we have to prioritize what is most important and realize our relationship with God is going to impact eternity. Amen. When this body goes back to the grave or whatever means by which we go, amen, eternity is forever. And we must be mindful and pursue after guaranteeing. I want to guarantee my place in heaven. I know the blood of Jesus does that, but i got to make sure I'm available to it. Praise God. i got to make sure that I have that hot relationship with him. Amen. So no other relationship on the face of this earth is more important than this one. Amen. Prioritize. Praise the Lord. What is your first priority? That was the title of my first message I ever preached. Amen. Our relationship with God has no room for ambiguity or compromise. We just can't allow it. It's too essential, too important, too central to everything that's valuable in our lives. Amen. And we know everything else is impacted by our relationship with the Lord. Every other relationship is impacted. Every other aspect of life. Talking about uh, uh, growing in intellect and being uh, successful financially. Everything's impacted 
by our relationship with God. Amen. So scripture refers to the church as the bride of Christ. As part of that bride, individual believers are called upon to commit to God as dramatically as a bride commits to her husband. Amen. I don't know of anyone that is getting ready to get married that doesn't have a heart after their mate and is passionate in, in being with them and pleasing them and doing things that they want to do. Amen. So would you marry someone who is half-hearted toward you? Of course not, but we're going to ask Jesus to do that. Amen. Would you feel good about your coming wedding if it, your soon-to-be husband or wife was uninterested or unaffectionate? Hey, wait a minute. Maybe this is, this is not the right move here. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're, we sure shouldn't expect Jesus to do that. If we are called to be the bride of Christ, some may not be comfortable with that analogy, but it's very accurate. No matter how manly and masculine we may be, we are going to be part and, and are becoming part of the bride of Christ. And he's not going to want to marry someone that doesn't love him passionately. Would you? Amen. That's, that's, that's a good analogy, isn't it? Praise God. Shouldn't a bride be passionate and excited about spending the rest of her life with him? Why should we be anything less? We need to be passionate for the Lord. Can everybody say amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God he gives us something to be passionate about. Praise God. All right, the Lord wants us to serve him with our whole heart. As we know, the prophet said, he will be found of us when we seek him with all of our heart. That's the key. That's the key to prayer. It's not saying the right things and going through the right motions and covering your list, whatever that may be, and those things can contribute. But having a heart that's sold out, seeking him with all of our heart. Amen. God has feelings too. He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, the Bible says. Amen. He expresses love for us by manifesting himself in flesh and dying on the cross. You can't prove any love greater than that. No greater love hath any man, he said, than they that lay down their lives for their friends. Amen. And we were the enemy of God when he did it for us. Amen. But true faith will include spiritual passion. Truth faith is going to include a passion for the Lord. According to Jesus, the first and greatest commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And think about this. This is a command in the Old Testament. He taught the children of Israel this. He, Jesus, without question, fully brought this to the New Testament. This is a requirement for a walk with God. We should not just acknowledge him. You know, just exist that he exists. I've talked to somebody the other day about the, the word believe. A lot of people think that when you say you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're just acknowledging he exists, and that's it. No, this is a passionate desire to walk with him, to please him, to do his will. Amen. And we are commanded to, to love him with all of our heart. Amen. Think about that. That's, that's the goal. That's the, uh, the platform we're sh to shoot for. Love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind. Amen. So many things in life do not work unless they are done purposefully and powerfully. We have all learned to avoid sluggish chainsaws. I got one of those. Burn through another one. <laughs> uh, dull knives, sleepy drivers. You ever see somebody wandering all over the road? What I do is, I, okay, it's time to back way off. I'm, I'm getting a huge space cushion here between this guy. Amen. I don't want to be the place he ends up in. Amen. Uh, inebriated pilots. Yeah, I'm not going to get on that plane. <laughs> Haphazard relationships. All these things people stay away from because they are dangerous and can be destructive. Amen. So should also we be mindful in our relationship with the Lord. Few of us will settle for a careless surgeon, dirty restaurants, inattentive babysitters, Yet many say, settle for a mediocre relationship with God when it's the relationship we should be the most careful about and absolutely be the most passionate about. Amen. We should love the Lord with all of our heart. Can you say amen? <laughs> Praise God. So it demands total buy-in. You know, you, you can't just say, I'm going to be a Christian on the weekend or on Sunday. It's 100%. Amen. He's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all, as one phrase puts it well. Amen. So much like bungee jumping and skydiving, you got to buy into it. Amen. And I, I'm serving the Lord with all my heart, but I won't be jumping out of any planes. I'll tell you that right now. Hallelujah. And bungee jumping is basically the same thing, except you got a string holding you up. <laughs> I, I'll just leave that at that. Amen. <laughs> I don't disrespect anybody that does it. That's more power to you. 
Amen. But I'm, I'm taking the jump for Jesus. I'm going to do that. Amen. God will settle for nothing less, so neither can we, than a full buy-in in our relationship with the Lord. Amen. So notice, God does not reject anyone for lack of skill or gifting. Thankful for that. Amen. I remember Brother West used to preach, God can use, you, you may not be able to read your name in boxcar letters on the railroad train, but you can still be used of God in a mighty way. Praise God. God doesn't reject us for any of those things. His problem is not with status or performance. His concern has to do with one's attitude toward him. Amen. He's disturbed when someone puts confidence in things and accomplishments rather than him. Sometimes we put them on our own selves. Look what I did. Look what I accomplished. I deserve this. How many, we hear that all the time in our culture today, that people think that they deserve certain things when, when they're not basic. I'm not going to go there. Hallelujah. So believers do not have to worry about perfection of performance, so we strive for it, but we do need to be concerned about our sincerity with God, being serious with our walk in God. We need to continue examining ourselves, take a look at ourselves continually, and see where we are in our walk with our sincerity with God. Amen. The Lord sums up his thoughts toward Laodicea in verse 17 when he warned, Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Amen. So he's speaking to a prosperous community here and saying, don't put your trust in those things. Amen. That's, that's so indicative of our culture today. We don't realize it, but we're the most blessed financially and, and, and physically. We're the most blessed nation on the face of this earth by far. Amen. And many times we take those for granted, even take pride in those things when we should be giving glory to God and recognize that we can't have anything without him. Amen. Praise God. Okay, here's a question. What are some protections God bl provides through the church to help us identify blind spots? Is there anybody who wants to take a look at that question and give us your answer? Protections God provides. I think there's a big... Go ahead, brother. And, you know, we don't believe that you should have to confess in every detail to a man or a woman those things, those sins that you've committed. God knows them all. We should confess to him. Amen. And look for repentance there. But he lifts the blinders off of us. Sometimes we put our own blinders up because we're satisfied with the carnal ways that are the desires of our flesh. Amen. Uh, so, but what he does, the, the word of God does it all the time. And he need, we need him to do that. Uh, reveal to us, help us to see clearly the road ahead of us, amen, and see where he wants us to go, the life he wants us to live. We need good, solid, straightforward teaching at times. We need some really frank, and this is what this lesson is, actually, really frank, straightforward, practical teaching that can help change us, amen. The, the Bible says the engraved word is able to save our soul, praise the Lord. That's where we find great deliverance from those blind spots, hallelujah. Okay, you say, I am rich and need nothing, uh, you don't realize your true condition, basically, is what Jesus was saying. It appears your self-sufficiency is what offended God most, content and satisfied in their own selves. And that's so indicative of our, of our culture today. When someone feels rich and in need of nothing, that person is deceived. We always need. He's the one who we need. That's one of the problems our culture has, acknowledging the reality, I need him. I need more than what I can provide. We teach a self-sufficient mindset in our culture, and, and much of that is good, but we can never deny our need for God, our absolute dire need for a deliverer and a Savior. Amen. And he is the one that meets that need. Praise God. It often takes a significant problem to remind us of our true state. How many knows that? God does that all the time through any of us. That want, We just have a glimmer of desire to please him. And he will bring things to our lives at times to 
remind us or even restore in us a desire for that passionate walk with him again. Amen. Like the millionaire who hears the doctor say, I'm sorry, no amount of money can cure your disease. I think every single life encounters these things at some point, and we realize how desperately we need a Savior. Amen. An athlete who hears the coach say, sorry, your injury is such that you will never play ball again. It makes you start to reevaluate your life and where you're heading. Amen. God wants to bless the lives of his people, but all the religious deeds, kind works, biblical education, accomplishments, or affiliations, every degree you got on the wall, don't let that be a point of pride. Amen. All good causes, they can never take the place of a dependent relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Come to him because you know we need him. I need you, Jesus. I, ha I could never count how many times I dropped to my knees with all my weight, crying out to God, I need you, Jesus, because without him, he said, we can do nothing. That's what he said. We can do nothing without him. We might as well come to that realization and, and apply that knowledge in our prayer life every day. Wake-up calls can be painful, but they can be restorative as well. They can be powerful in the means of God uses to restore our relationship. So to completely depend, uh, to, to admit complete dependence on Christ is where it all starts. Amen. How many are not ashamed to state, I need the Lord? Hallelujah. That's where the miracles begin. Praise God. When we acknowledge we are in need of the Lord. Hallelujah. So God called them to turn to him. Jesus was lovingly calling the church in Laodicea back to a genuine faith and a passionate relationship with him. In verse 18, he admonished them to buy gold, tried in the fire, and white raiment to anoint their eyes with eye salve. These pursuits are the antidote to all the problems mentioned in the, in the previous verse. The, the analogy of gold tried in fire is clear. Not everything that glitters is gold. Uh, some may look gold and not be gold. And they have the, even like those gold bars they were selling, had a small portion of gold, but it was not the quality that was intended or desired. Amen. Um, in order to be genuine and valuable, God must be, or gold must be purified using high temperature, facing the fire. Amen. It's heated up to all the impurities float to the top and then can be removed. I always, I always look at it this way. God's got to reveal to us our faults before they can be removed. And he is able to do that individually in our own walk with God, especially when we're willing to lay our hearts out open before him, asking for his help. Yeah, then you guess what? God's going to start helping and revealing things in our lives that we might say, wait a minute, I thought I was good, but God was helping us grow. Amen. Heating up the life that we're living till the impurities come to where they are visible, and then they can be dealt with and removed. But that's what we have to do. Once it becomes visible, God empowers us to remove them. Amen. And we have to make those steps to do it. Praise God. Okay, how does God use life experiences to, pur uh, to purify our faith? It's what we've been discussing. That's another question for you. Anybody want to give your take on that? How does God use life experiences? Go ahead, my brother. Praise the Lord. And keep those in your memory. He said, I was thinking about David when he says, when he saw Goliath and says, God delivered into my hand the bear and the lion. I've had these experiences before. I hit the trial. I had this attack in my life. And God helped me to come through it. And it's a knowledge of the victory that helped him win the next one. Praise God. And also how that, the things we experience are a testimony to help others. Amen. That may be going through the same thing. That's what we teach in our mission class in the, the uh, membership courses, how that, that God wants to use those things. So if you may not have had that same experience of someone you talk to 
where they're at. You may know somebody that does. Share each other's testimonies. Use it for the, for the example of how God can deliver. Amen. And God can reach another soul through that, that thing. Hallelujah. So it's very important that we learn the lessons from our trials and tribulations that God is trying to teach us. Hallelujah. Buying white raiment speaks of purity as well. Later on in Revelation 7, John described believers who made their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. That's how they get white. Amen. By the washing of the blood of Jesus Christ. Our purity, our righteousness comes from him. He is the source of our righteousness. Hallelujah. The idea is that believers should settle for nothing less than a pure and genuine relationship with God. Amen. We were teaching a little while ago about righteousness and holiness. And holiness is something we work toward, but it has to start with the gift of God of his righteousness but we are called to maintain it and we are called to work on improving in our personal walk how we live up to his righteousness amen revelation 19 and 8 says of christ's bride and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for uh for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints so that white is symbolic like we said this city of laodicea was known for its fine black wool and here jesus is telling them put on white raiment <laughs> amen remember where your source lies amen for uh, finally the lord referred uh, to the eye salve for which the city was also well known for the salve was an analogy an analogous to god's spirit which helps those who receive it to see more clearly the holy spirit's unction like the ancient eye salves first smarts with conviction of sin and then heals Amen. Sometimes that first initial blast is, is difficult. Uh, you know, it's like peroxide. Someone said it's not supposed to burn. Man, I've had it burn, but I know it's worthwhile. I, I <laughs> had times when I poured that on me and it burned like fire at first, and then it's going to help it heal. And then it's going to uh, improve the condition of the, of the wound rapidly. Praise God. Amen. And so that's what the Holy Ghost does for us. Sometimes it hits us hard. Like you say, instead of saying amen, I say, oh, me. <laughs> You're hitting me on this one, Lord. But it's healthy for us and important for us to be able to grow in him. Praise God. Amen. So he opens our eyes first to ourselves and our own wretchedness and then to the Savior in all of his preciousness. Amen. All the gift of what he can do in our lives when we apply ourselves to his word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just jumped ahead of myself. Okay. The Lord wants to be the source we turn to for everything. So while our culture may value self-sufficiency, it's not as noble as it may seem, God's people would do well to admit they are weak and he is strong. How many knows? That's what he said. When you are weak, he is strong, he told Paul. So he allowed Paul to get weak to teach him that he can trust in the strength of God. That's what he wants to do for us. The path to abundant life begins with humility and can only be traveled successfully when it's done wholeheartedly. Necessary elements to the nature of Christians that are planning on making heaven their home. Hallelujah. Okay, can you remember a loss, sickness, tragedy that served as a wake-up call, reminding you of your complete dependency on God? Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone want to go ahead with that one? I know you do, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> brother Cohen.
precious testimony. Hallelujah. Among many, I know that you have. Praise God. And God is a deliverer and God is a healer. Sometimes he lets you face the heat of the trial to find that out. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You want, you want to share this? Amen. Present help from the time of trouble. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said he would avenge us speedily. Praise God. I'm glad that's the kind of God we're serving today. Praise the Lord. Amen to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He knocks on our heart's door. Amen. He's calling for that deeper relationship with him. A promise that those who open their hearts to him and hear his voice will have fellowship with him. Amen. And ultimately overcome. And it's the key. To every need in life, everything about life, this is the central, most important thing we can do is to draw near to God, amen, and believe him as we yield ourselves to his will. Hallelujah. He promised the Laodiceans that they would adjust their attitude, open up to him, he would sup with them. Amen. I stand at the door, knock, open the door, I will come in, sit down with you, and have a meal with you, have sweet fellowship with you. Amen. There's a beauty. If you don't know that beauty of the fellowship with the Lord individually in prayer, oh, seek him till you find it. Hallelujah. God wants that for every one of us. Praise the Lord in that time together. Amen. Fellowship with God is available to those who set aside time to pray, to build relationship with our Lord. Amen. Amazing fellowship that will teach us when we recognize our total dependence on him. Amen. But we have to open up the door of our hearts to him. Amen. And, and strive for unbroken fellowship with him. Maintain an unbroken fellowship. That's where strength's going to come. That's where there'll be a daily improvement in our situation. Amen. When we maintain that on a daily basis. Praise God. There's some really good stuff here about some practical suggestions as to what a personal relationship with God might look like. And uh, I think we really need to take this to heart. I, that practical teaching is what we're talking about in need today. Make prayer first each day. Talk to God before you do anything else in the morning. 
Amen. The devil likes to mess people's heads up when they wake up in the morning, get them caught off guard from the night of slumber. Amen. And get them distracted. We got to establish our relationship with him in the morning. Guard your prayer time in place. Amen. Make that a, a, a place of, of a garrison, you know, a place of that's like that strong tower where we run into in our say. Pray conversationally. Be honest with God about your feelings. Amen. Plan personal prayer retreats, expecting positive feedback. I'm going to get a hold of God till I get an answer. That's what Jacob did. Amen. I'm not letting you go until you heal me. Praise God. Speak to me. Talk to God everywhere and about everything. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like I said before, some years ago, somebody walking down the street talking, people said they were crazy. Nobody cares anymore. People got Bluetooth in their ear. You know, they're talking. <laughs> I don't have any time. I tell you, it was probably a dozen times I'd walk in the room. My boss would be talking. I thought he was talking to me. And I started answering. He'd go, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're talking to somebody else. Amen. So don't worry about what anybody thinks about it. Amen. And we shouldn't care anyhow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I, I like having church driving down the road. It's a good fellowship. Praise God. Amen. So listen to these. Practically, you can rekindle your relationship with a God considering uh, approaching prayer from a relationship angle. And this one, it, it kind of struck me at first when I read this, some pr uh, prayer statements that we can make. But, but it really establishes the reality that this is a relationship. How are you doing today? Things that we can say to God. How are you doing today? God doesn't need our help to get things worked out in his life. He doesn't need somebody to talk to. We're the ones that need it. But it establishes the reality that this is a relationship. I'm not trying to dishonor him. We ought to come into his presence with worship and praise. Amen. But I'm here to have a conversation. Hallelujah. And God wants us to. He opens his arms and welcomes us into a relationship in this way. Amen. So we can say to him, how are you doing today? What do you want me to do in this situation? Amen. Conversational talk with the Lord. And, and, and like I said, I don't want to take away from the reality that we are to revere him and approach him with respect and worship. Amen. But, but he wants us to bring our needs to him. What do you want me to do with this situation? How do you want me to pray? Let me tell you about my struggles and my fears. Amen. If you, you want somebody to talk to you about the things you're going through, he's the best one to talk to. He, he's a wonderful counselor. In fact, he is the ultimate counselor. In fact, he will eliminate the need for counselors in most situations. Amen. Hallelujah. Most problems people come uh, to pastors about can be resolved on our knees in prayer. Amen. Praise God. That's the truth. Hallelujah. I want to feel about, I want to feel what you're feeling and care about what you care about. How many would, would do that with the Lord? It's so important. I want to see this world through your eyes. I want to love like you love. I want to treat people the way you treat people. I want to care like you care. I want to feel what you feel. Amen. God wants that relationship for us. Amen. So that we can perceive of him and be more like him. I need you to wrap your arms around me and be my affirmation. How many knows what that's talking about? You know, we don't always get pats on the back, nor should we need to, but I sure want to make sure he would give me one. I sure want to make sure he is pleased with my path that I take. Amen. That is a path that pleases him and what he wants me to do. Hallelujah. But the, the point is that important aspect of having this personal relationship one-on-one -on -one conversation with the, the, the God that knows everything, with the God that can meet our needs and make a way for us. He won't always make it the way we want it, but he'll do it the best way for us when we don't even perceive of it. Amen. It's a walk of faith, brothers and sisters. We're not always going to understand why we face what we face, but we can know he understands and he knows what we're dealing with. And he's able to make a way and we'll do it in his way and in his time. Hallelujah. Praise God. The blessed hope we have is that when we open our hearts to God, he's going to come in. Hallelujah. He's knocking on the door today. Not just those that are lost, we that are in the kingdom of God. He's knocking on the door of our hearts saying, open up and let me come in. Let's have fellowship one with another. Let's talk this thing over. Amen and help us. How many are thankful that's the God we serve today? Praise the Lord. Will you stay and let's give God glory and thank him for this today. Hallelujah. And welcome him. Tell him, God, I want that relationship to grow between me and my Lord, my master, my savior and me. 
Hallelujah, God, open up. We open our hearts to you, Lord. We open up the door, Father, and welcome you to speak to us, Lord, and welcome you to teach us your ways and make us what you want and bring us in the way you'd have us go. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of life and for the mighty hand of God on your people today. Guide us, Lord. Your will be done, we pray. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good to us. Hallelujah. We're so excited about what God has in store yet today. Amen. So thankful for how that went last Sunday. What a great time we had. I'm so glad we did that. It's one of the best decisions I made in a while was to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. We love you all. Let's take a, a short break before we head into worship. Let's greet one another. Let them know you're glad that you're here. Amen. Glad that they're here. God bless.
Praise the Lord, church. Say, praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. I'm excited for what Jesus has in store. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited for the precious, moving, uh, graceful power of the Almighty God that is already in this place. Uh, I tell you what, I can feel him this morning. Uh, I know he's here with us. I'm excited uh, for what he has in store for us. Amen. I wonder if we can all stand, hallelujah, and give glory to the Almighty God. Uh, oh, we've had some precious time and fellowship as we transition to our work of service, but now it's time to get back focused uh, on Jesus, uh, on, oh, hallelujah, on praising him, uh, on giving him worship, uh, on magnifying his name, uh, and getting ready to receive the word, uh, hallelujah, so that, whoa, we might retain it in our hearts uh, and might not sin against God, uh, hallelujah, Lord God, we praise you, we thank you, we glorify and lift you up, uh, you are holy and mighty in every way, uh, you are a powerful God, uh, a victorious God, an almighty God, and you deserve all the glory, the honor, and praise in the name of Jesus. Push away every distraction, every weight that's been set before us. Let our focus be on you and only on you, God. Let there be liberty in this place to praise your name, to jump, to dance, to shout, to clap our hands, to walk and bask in the liberty oh, in which you make us free. Oh, God, we praise your name. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm in this church. Oh, this glorious church. I didn't join. No, I was born. I had a new birth. In some glorious day, I'm going to sail away. It's by His grace, not by my works in this church. Oh, I'm in this church, this glorious church. Oh, I did enjoy, no, oh, I was born, I had a new birth. Some glorious day, oh, I'm going to sail away. It's by His grace, not by my works. I'm in this church when Jesus came. He was left out. There was no room where he was welcome here on earth. Oh, but he had a plan for a house that shall forever stand. He spoke these words upon the rock. I'll build my church. I'm in this church. This glorious church. I did enjoy. No, I was born. I had a new birth. In some glorious day, I'm going to say the Welcome here on earth. Oh, but he had a plan for help that shall forever stand. You look these words upon this rock. I feel my turn up in this church. This glorious church. I did enjoy, no, I was born. I had a new birth. It's a glorious day. I'm going to sail away. Church. I didn't know I was born. I had a new birth. It's a glorious day. I'm gonna sail away. By His grace, not by my words. Hallelujah. Why don't we praise the Lord? We're in this church. The church of the living God. Oh, the church that is free, that is victorious. That old God, where God works His delivering power day after day after day. And when Jesus came, he was left out. There was no rumor he was welcome here on earth. But he had a plan for a house that shall forever stand. Spoke these words upon this rock of the Almighty. Church up in this church, this glorious church. I did enjoy, no, I was born. I had a new birth. It's a glorious day. Glorious church, I didn't join, no, I was born, 
some glorious day. I'm going to sail away. It's by your grace, not by my word. By your grace, not by my word. By your grace, not by my word. I'm in this church. He purchased us with his precious blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Drew us closer to him by his grace, his love, and his mercy. I'm here to tell you, we are the church, the body of believers together. Hallelujah. Jesus made the way for our deliverance, victory, and freedom. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you have a need in your body, we ask you to come up to the front. Uh, let the ministers lay hands on you and pray with you. Uh, let God, hallelujah, meet you there. And let God meet the need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is able, hallelujah, to do a wondrous work today. Hallelujah. Let's, oh, let him have his way this morning and move the way he wants to. Hallelujah. Jesus is in this room, here right now, here right now, making this place I stand, holy ground, holy ground, Lord, your spirit.
Before you, I'm bound. 
give God some praise. Uh, let's magnify his name. Uh, hallelujah. He is holy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder if right now we can just go ahead and continue to give some more praise unto the living God. Hallelujah. He is so good right now. Hallelujah. His presence is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a miracle worker, a promise keeper. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Even in the darkness, God, you are there, hallelujah. Even when all seems lost, God, you have never failed, hallelujah. Hallelujah, even in my darkest times, even when I failed you constantly, God, you never stopped showing mercy and grace. Even when I was evil in my heart, God, you still saw the good in me. And you brought it out of me, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, you are so good in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Yama roshanda ya la 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 moronda ya la 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 moroshanda ya. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. There is something powerful about our worship. There is something powerful that takes place when we worship. God ripped that veil in two, hallelujah. Because he wanted us to be in the holy of holies, hallelujah. No longer are we separated from his presence. Do you not realize that we serve the God that split the Red Sea, hallelujah? Do you not realize that we serve the God who opened the blinded eyes, hallelujah? Do you not realize that we serve the God who spoke to Zacchaeus in the tree, who called him out by name and said, come to me, hallelujah. God has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light, hallelujah. God has called us, he has chosen us, hallelujah, for such a time as this because he desires a relationship with you because he knows the darkness that's in your life. He knows the trials that you're facing. He knows the situations that you're in. He knows the financial dilemmas that you're facing right now. But God says, if you would just come unto me, I will take care of it, hallelujah. Do not worry about it anymore. Just trust in me and have faith, hallelujah. hallelujah. We serve that kind of God right now. Hallelujah. Glory and I run inside the throne room before you. Hallelujah. When you bow before the Lord, hallelujah, when you submit yourself unto God, God then begins to work. He then begins to move in your life. He then begins to take your situation and turn it around for your good. Hallelujah. Before you.
as I run inside the throne room before you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you do not have the Holy Ghost, today is the day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated if you would like. Hallelujah. If you want to keep worshiping, you are more than welcome to. Hallelujah. But it gives me great honor every time I come up here to bring forth the reports that is going on overseas right now. And God is doing a miraculous work, hallelujah. God is doing the, the miraculous. He's doing the unspoken, hallelujah. And I wanted to give some focal points today, hallelujah. And um, in the Leeward Islands, hallelujah, it says, in prayer, and I, I know, Sean, you'll, you'll love this. You'll really appreciate this. In prayer, we felt to inquire with the Tutu Mall, the criteria to pass out tracts and church invitations. The mall director was very friendly and most helpful. He was impressed with our idea and allowed us access the next two Sundays. We handed out more than 600 church invitations and made several community contacts. The second Sunday after passing out those tracts, we had two first-time visitors at the St. Thomas Outreach Group. Nothing is wasted. No. Nothing is wasted. From David and Alice Kine, hallelujah. hallelujah. Every first and third outreach, we go out, we pass out invitations. We don't know what they'll do with those invitations, but we trust and believe that that seed will be planted and that God will encourage them to come to the sanctuary, hallelujah, to come to this church, hallelujah. So just know that nothing is wasted. Nothing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In France, at least eight people were recently baptized. Blinded eyes were opened. Tumors and cancers have disappeared. Withered hands made whole. Hallelujah. Jews, Gentiles, and Muslims all worshiping together. Hallelujah. Muslims, Jews, and Gentiles worshiping the one and only true Jesus. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can do such a thing. From Paul and Darla Broch. Hallelujah. God is doing it. Hallelujah. Since January of 2021, 25 people have been baptized in Jesus' name throughout the nation of Ghana. One woman testified that a bad spirit had bothered her since the age of seven. After receiving the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost which gives you power, hallelujah. The Holy Ghost which gives you authority over darkness, over every demon in hell, hallelujah. After receiving the power of the Holy Ghost and being baptized in Jesus' name, she is no longer tempted, tormented by that spirit anymore. No longer is she tempted, tortured, nothing. God has set her free, hallelujah, from Logan and Hannah Blackman, hallelujah. And that's just a few of the focal points that have been going on. I'm going to hang this up in the back. If you want to look at more of it after church, feel free, hallelujah. We also have our prayer calendar. We do it every month. We pray for each missionary on that day. And also um, on the tithing envelopes, we have it back there, um, we have a section for foreign missions. If you feel led in your heart to give to the missionaries, we have those plaques out there on the wall. Those are missionaries that we are partnered with, that we help support. You don't necessarily have to be partnered to help support them. If you put any amount of money on the, in, in the envelope for home missions, that money will go to the missionaries. It will help them receive the things that they don't necessarily get to have in the U.S. Not every missionary is able to get a, a good car to transport them to church because they live in areas where there's hills and mountains even, and they have to go through forests and woods just to get to the house of God. Any amount will help the missionary and their mission field. Hallelujah. So if you feel led in your heart to give, I encourage you, give. 
Because it is better to give than to receive. Hallelujah. And it's more rewarding. But I wonder if right now as a church, we can go ahead and stand. We're going to go to prayer right now for our missionaries. Hallelujah. That's right, brother. Come on. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil's running scared. Hallelujah. I wonder if right now we can pray for Daniel and Monica Rushing. They are missionaries in South Korea. They are in a dangerous part of the world because their neighbors are not too friendly. Hallelujah. But God's protection is upon his people. And I wonder if right now we as a church can bind together for them right now. The rushing family. Hallelujah. Let's go into prayer and let's believe that God is going to pour out his spirit and his anointing upon the people of South Korea. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, right now, God, we come before you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We believe right now, Jesus, that you are going to pour out your spirit and anointing upon all flesh. Hallelujah. That you are going to do the miraculous right now in the name of Jesus. That every soul, Lord God, that has not been filled with your spirit, Lord God, will be led by your spirit to come to your house, to come to your church. Hallelujah. Lord, that the rushing family, Lord God, will see people being filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. That they will be baptized in Jesus' name. Every sick person in South Korea, Lord God, every sick person that they come in contact with, Lord God, let that person be healed, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God. Lord, pour out your spirit, Lord God. Pour out your spirit, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we believe you, Lord God, that you're going to do what you said you would do, Lord God. That in the last days, Lord God, you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, bless each and every home, Lord God, each and every family, Lord God. Lord Jesus, that comes to the Rushings Church, hallelujah. Lord God, give them more Bible study opportunities, Lord God. Lord Jesus, help them, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless their mission field, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, can you lift up your hands and thank Jesus for what he's going to do, Lord God. Give him a praise, a shout of praise, and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated, hallelujah, if we can have our ushers, hallelujah. Thank you, my Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for the love that you bestowed upon us. Lord, we are nothing in your sight, but through you, we are able to lift up your name and give you thanks. We thank you for the gift of life for another day. We thank you for your presence that is here. And Father, we pray you may go with us when we go to our separate homes, Lord God, and continue to bless and keep us. Father, we present you with your offering. We pray you bless it, Lord God. Let it go out to the fields to do your work, Lord Jesus, because you promise us that you will always be faithful to us. Father, the speaker is about to come forth. Put words of wisdom and understanding on his lips or her lips, Lord God. As those words come forth, let us all be sensitive to your spirit, Lord God, as we continue to bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, while the uh, ushers are going around, um, I'm going to read today's announcements. Uh, next Sunday is Capital Campaign Sunday, so uh, please remember your pledges. Uh, tonight, leadership training at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, so if you want to be there, if you can be there, please be there. God uh, does a lot of amazing things in those uh, lessons. Um, this Tuesday is Churchwide Fast Day, and don't forget about youth class on Wednesday nights. Men's Fellowship is also this Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. 
So we encourage all men to be there. Um, outreach is this Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, if you can't be there, please be in prayer because God moves mightily uh, when we're out there uh, talking to people. Uh, next Sunday is Father's Day. So if you are a father, please be here. <laughs> Hallelujah. And um, that's, that's it. stand and let's give God praise again. Uh, let's go ahead and lift up the name of Jesus as Pastor Meehan comes up. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give him that glory today. Hallelujah to you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy of all adoration and magnification. Amen. Hallelujah. I still adore him. Amen. I know they adore that baby in the manger. I still adore him. Praise God. And I still worship him with all my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, how many are thankful for the, the first responder service last Sunday? Did you enjoy it? Amen. I'm so glad that it went well. I think we properly respected and honored all that were intended. So glad that all those that we did have. Amen. It was just fantastic. I'm really happy about the fact that we did that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just a couple quick things, though. We had three going to junior camp this past week. Zion Brown, Emily Harris, Chris Meehan, the third. Emily Harris got the Holy Ghost first time in her life. Praise God. Is she in here? No? Okay. <laughs> Amen. We're all happy about that. Praise the Lord. We're starting passing the mantle, too, Lord willing, tonight in leadership training fantastic new series that I know is going to be a, a blessing to all in 10. So that's for people in leadership and anybody aspiring toward it. Amen. It's open to everybody. Amen. So come join us if you can. That's 6 o'clock tonight. Men's Fellowship, I'll be in touch with you, men, about what we're going to be doing. Not sure exactly yet. Amen. I was hoping to get some antique cars here Sunday for Father's Day. It's not working out too well. Everybody shuts down for the summer. But there are a couple remnants of, of ones going on this week, so I'll get back with you about that. Praise God. Amen. I'm ready for the word of the Lord today. How about you? I want to hear what God has said. I'm approaching the table with a hunger today. I want to feast on this living word. Amen. I want to feast on this heavenly bread, this hidden manna that God delivers to those that hunger after it. Amen. I want to open my heart to the word today. How about you? Praise God. Praise God. How about we make sure the Lord knows he's welcome. Let's welcome our brother, Sean Mayo, to the pulpit today. Amen. What God has on his heart to share with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for the Mayos. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good, so holy, so mighty, so awesome. There's nothing that my God cannot do. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're in the lowest of lows and the weakest uh, of weeks, God is there. Hallelujah. When you're in the highest of highs and everything is going well, Jesus is with you. Hallelujah. When you don't know where to turn to or what to do and you need a healing in your body, the deliverer, the victor, the healer is right there with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is ever present in the time of need. Hallelujah. He's always around, always abounding, always able, hallelujah, to move and work upon each and every one of his children, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I'm excited for what God has in store, for what God is doing even now, and what he's going to do, hallelujah, I'm excited, didn't, didn't we have an awesome service this morning, praise God, didn't God move, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, we don't serve a God that's far away but that's nigh, near unto his people. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Hebrews chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 3 and beginning with verse 6. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is an absolute honor. Um, I, I, I appreciate so much the ability to be able to come up here and preach. I give honor to our pastor, honor to the Lord, hallelujah, that helps me and strengthens me and leads me, hallelujah. Without him, I am nothing, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. But I do feel I have a word of the Lord today. 
I feel like it is just in line. Got a little bit of confirmation today in the Bible study. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you weren't here or didn't get to hear the Bible study or all of it this morning, I urge you once this YouTube live turns over and becomes something that you can look up over and over again, please listen to it. It will help transform your life. Amen. Hallelujah. It was an awesome Bible study. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. Amen. When you're there. Hallelujah. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Again, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Hallelujah. Today, I just want to preach to you a little bit, teach to you whatever God lays on my heart to do. Hold fast. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord God, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your holy and mighty name. Lord, you are wondrous, you are glorious, you are mighty. Hallelujah, there is no one like you, no one greater than you in all the earth. Oh, wondrous and holy art thou, God. I ask you to lead us and direct us this morning. Guide us and keep us according to your mighty hand and your precious word working and moving in us. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, let your will be done. Hallelujah, lead me, Lord God, as I preach the word that you've laid on my heart, God. Hallelujah, touch and move upon each and every one today, both those that are here and those that are online. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. I wonder if we can clap our hands in the Lord. I wonder if we can give him worship and praise. I wonder if we can magnify his name. Hallelujah, glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Hallelujah. In the, the, the Old Testament, there is a scripture, a chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 6. It's very popular among the Jewish community. It's very popular because it contains the beginning of the Shema, which is the uh, words that are to be spoken in the morning and in the evening every day unto the Lord. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 9 says, Hear, O Israel, or listen, Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words, verse 6, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house. And on thy gates, God was telling uh, his, his people to make sure that these words, uh, the commandments uh, and the direction to serve, to love uh, and to obey God uh, were everywhere in their life. Uh, when they sat down, uh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God uh, is one Lord. When they stood up, uh, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Uh, when they walked down the road, hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God is one Lord. Uh, when they woke up, hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God is one Lord. And when they went to bed, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. It wasn't just enough for the adults to say it, though. They were supposed to teach their children. What does the Bible say, Johnny? What does the Bible say, little Iskar? Hallelujah. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And now to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Hallelujah. Even though it was repeated, it was never a vain repetition. It was something to remind them of the power, provision, redemption, deliverance that God provided over and over again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They can, it gave the, it gave the, the uh, children of Israel when they were in Babylonian captivity. Activity, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, I'm sure, uh, being practiced over and over again. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, uh, reflecting on the blessings uh, throughout the Word of God uh, of the Testament.
testimony of his oneness, of the testimony of his provision. If you serve him, hallelujah, they were able to walk boldly up to the king and say, oh, hallelujah, oh king, we are not going to bow down, neither bend a knee. We're not going to do anything to this dumb old idol because we know that the Lord our God is one Lord and he is the one we serve. And even if he doesn't deliver us, oh, hallelujah, I know our God is faithful and will take care of us on the day that we die. Woo! Hallelujah! It says, be frontless between thine eyes. In other words, every time they blinked, hallelujah, they were supposed to reflect on the almighty power of God. Hallelujah. By Jesus' time, they had a, what was, the, was called the telephone, or telephone, which is, as you can see up here, a standard wrap during, being, to be put on in the morning and in the evening. They would put this binding, that the little box there, you see the box on the arm and the box on the head. They would have actual parchments, scriptures uh, of, of both the Exodus to re remind them uh, of the redemptive power of the Almighty God, uh, how God delivered them from Egypt, uh, but also they would have uh, the uh, Deuteronomy and, and Numbers, the scriptures that talked about the blessings of God and the necessity to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and the necessity to do what God would tell them to do. Hallelujah. They would wrap them in a very special wrap seven times around the arm and bind it to their hands. And, and, and most people were right-handed, and they would put it on the weaker hand to be close to the heart. They would put the teflon on the top of the head, Right there at the top of the, of the skull, right where most, most people reference philosophically the, the head, the headquarters of the mind. And they would put it all the way on the middle finger, the longest protrusion of the hand to remind themselves that Jesus had to be part of everything that they thought, every move that they made, and everything that they did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They would even, at the, at the beginning, they would cover their eyes to remind themselves that when they opened them, that all things were made by God, that there was nothing that they could look at upon the universe, upon any existence that they could see that didn't have the almighty hand and architecture of the Lord God at work in it. It was a constant and continual reminder every day that God was still as real that day as he was the day before. God was still able to deliver that day as he did back in, the, in Egypt. God God was still fulfilling his promise and commanding his people to obey him each and every day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Shema itself, the words that were spoken were about 20 verses and included Numbers 15, 41 that reminded Israel. He said, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Israel. I am the Lord thy God. So every time that they, not only was it in the boxes that they had on their arms, on their heads, but it was spoken every morning and every evening that God delivered you out of Egypt. God delivered you out of bondage. God redeemed your souls. Walk two million people away from a tyrant, uh, 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 a tyrant uh, um, uh, uh, king of Egypt, a tyrant Pharaoh, and allow the people of Israel to find the land of promise. Hallelujah. He is the Lord, thy God, that takes care of his people. But no matter. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. No, I, let's praise God. Hallelujah. He is the God that takes care of his people. Whoo. Mm. Hallelujah. But there was a problem. No matter how hard they wrapped the teflon around their heads, or around their arms, no matter how hard they pushed it and pulled it towards their heart, it would never go any further than the outside. The scriptures and the word of God that were on the parchment paper that were wrapped in them would go no further than what was on the outside. And that, that constant reminder, that constant constant covenant to, to make sure that their love for God remained steadfast and was reminded every day and that they remember the redemption power of God was only to be exercised on the outside. But Ezekiel said, I make a new covenant 
with my people. Well, I will write my law in their inward parts. Uh, hallelujah. You see, uh, Jesus uh, was the fulfillment uh, of the law. Jesus uh, was the fulfillment uh, of what had been promised uh, for so, so long. Uh, and with Jesus came the possibility that no longer we would have to wrap the, the tefillin around our arms and around our head, but he would be in our actions. Hallelujah. We could have a mind after Christ as the Holy Ghost made us free from the bonds. That was laid on our heart that we might not sin against him and we could give all glory to God for every action that we did according to his word. What am I saying? I'm saying that Jesus was the answer and he's greater than any binding that we can put on the outside. He's greater than anything that we can do exteriorly because he loves us and is willing to live with us and dwell with us on the inside. There is no greater miracle, listen to me, there is no greater miracle that has ever been done or performed besides a person being filled with the Spirit of God, evidenced by speaking in a language as God directs. No greater miracle than that. You get healed from cancer, that's great. It's taken out of you. It's gone. It's away from your body. Amen? You have a leg regrow. Great. Your leg's grown back. But those things don't save you. Who? But the precious God of gods, Lord of lords, and King of kings dwelling in your heart. Is able to make the difference from a life that was lived in sin to a life that can be lived righteously, holy, in front of the Almighty God. There is no greater miracle than the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. What I'm saying is we have the ability for the Shema to be written in our hearts. Hallelujah. The hero Israel, the Lord our God, is one Lord. It can become more than just words. It can be something that is instinctual, that burns in us when we hear it, that brings us joy and peace. Not only can we just see the blessings of God, but by the power of God that he's given to us, we can lay our hands on others and watch them see the glory of God through God acting in us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And in Hebrews, chapter, it's going back to chapter 6, it says, Whose house are we if we hold fast to the hope? Hallelujah. The confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Jesus is our confidence. Jesus is our rejoicing. And Jesus is our hope unto the end. I'm here to tell you, church, we have to hold fast to what God has done oh, for us. Hallelujah. We have to hold fast to God's work and God's moving in us. We have to hold fast to the joy that we experienced when he moved upon us, when we repented, turned our lives around, gave our hearts to him. Hallelujah. We're baptized in his name and received the precious gift of the Holy Ghost when God took control of the most unruly thing in the universe our tongue hallelujah praise god we've got to hold fast to what god had done in our lives we can't just let it walk away that word hold fast is is can echo which means to hold to bind it was actually more more appropriately used to say to restrain somebody so they couldn't be let go praise the lord I said it was meant to say to restrain somebody so they couldn't be let go. It had a binding meaning. It had a meaning, oh, hallelujah, that enforced and recognized we have to hold on as tight as we can. We cannot let go. We've got to have to be as near and dear to ourselves, ingrained as part of us. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you there is no other place to go. 
in the mighty power and hand of Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, we, we find a similar narrative of devotion as was found in the Old Testament. Uh, verse 12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Hallelujah. 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 As we talked about, we are not to be lukewarm in this world. We are not to be lukewarm in our relationship with God. God says, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I am going to spew you out of my mouth because I cannot stand apathy. Hallelujah. I will not dwell with somebody that gives halfway, as Pastor eloquently said. Can, will you expect to be married to somebody that just kind of so so cares about the relationship? Would you be really interested if somebody was kind of wishy washy about everything that you were going on and everything that you were doing? If they ask if you love them, if they said, eh, I don't know. Is that, the, is that the marriage material that you want? No. The same is true for God. He wants someone that is on fire for him and say, Jesus, I remember what you delivered me from. I remember the sin that consumed my soul. I remember the addiction that I couldn't get over until you worked it out. And I'm going to hold on to you with everything that I have. Hallelujah, because I can't imagine letting you go. Holding fast to God prevents us from being deceived by the enemy. If we have a constant, daily devotion unto God, and we're constantly and continually seeking to be right with Him, to hold Him right, to do what He wants us to do, it says, ex exhort one another daily what it's called today, lest any of you be hardened but the deceitfulness of sin. We need our brothers and sisters, hallelujah, to exhort unto us, to encourage us, to help lead us away from the wrong paths. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love it. I've got a, quite, a, quite a few people that every once in a while send me YouTube videos and, and messages and, 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 and even just encouragement. And I love that. And I need that. We all need it to be reminded that God is good, that God is able, that God is a way maker, that God is wonderful in every way. So we not hardened by the life in the deceitfulness of sin. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is the house builder and all things are through him and in him. Hallelujah. We are partakers of his divine power and presence when we daily remain steadfast in our confidence in Christ. Hallelujah. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. I am the Lord that brought you out of Egypt. I am the Lord that saved your soul. I am the Lord that when you didn't have any money on the table and any food in the fridge that I provided, I am the Lord that when your body was sick and there was nothing that the doctors could do to you, I brought the healing. I am the Lord that when you were oh, oh, consumed with addiction, lust, and issues, I came and delivered you. I am the Lord, your God. Hold fast to the test testimony of which God made you free. Hold on to what Jesus has done in your life. The third mighty man of God, the mighty man of David, I'm sorry, in, the, in, the, in 2 Samuel, his name was Eleazar. Hallelujah. And he stood in between the Philistines and the lentils. 
the, the crop that the children of Israel were growing for themselves. And the Philistines, as, as cheap and as, as cruel as they were, sat and waited and waited and waited till the harvest was ready. And then they were going to rush in. They let the Israelites till the ground, prepare it, plant it, pray over it, let the rains come, make sure that all the bugs and everything stayed away, did all the work to make sure that the crop was good and plenteous. And then the Philistines wanted to rush in, scare them all away, and take the harvest for themselves. Hallelujah. But Eleazar came and st stood in between the lentils uh, and the Philistines, and he started uh, smoting the Philistines uh, over and over and over again. Uh, and it said uh, to the point that his hand became weary. Hallelujah. We don't fight people. We fight principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And I'm here to tell you, even if you're not fighting, they are. Even if you're not pursuing, they are. Hallelujah. Even if you're not serving God, they are serving their intents, their interests, their selfish desires. The war never stops until Jesus finally comes in glory on the chariot. Hallelujah. Bringing victory and finally casting the enemy into the lake of fire for eternal torment. But that's the only time that it's going to be done. Until then, daily, hourly, every second, the enemy is fighting for your soul. Hallelujah. He is fighting to put some seed of deceitfulness in your heart so that you grow bitterness, that you separate from your brethren, that you isolate yourself. And you decide that the world is a much better place and much more friendly than the church. I'm here to tell you the devil is constantly trying to find what gets your buttons, uh, hallelujah, what gets under your skin, uh, what hurts and harms you, what makes you offended, what makes you afraid, uh, what takes you out of your comfort zone. And he's constantly probing and parading, trying to get every little fracture in the fortress of your soul that he can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we must exhort one another so that blindness that was spoken of in the Bible study is, is cut away. The veil is torn open and we can see for what it is, the deceitfulness of sin. Hallelujah. But unless, like the children of Israel, we bind ourselves to the confidence and hope in Christ, we will be deceived. I know this is a harder message than, than most, and I'd love to bring you something that just is uplifting and everything, but sometimes we've got to exhort a, a little bit. Amen? Amen? But I'm telling you, if you are not giving yourself completely and wholeheartedly to God, if you're thinking it's okay to just sit on the fence line and serve the Lord here and serve your, your, your lust of your flesh here, I'm telling you you're dead wrong. At some point in time, the deceitful of from sin is going to pull you all the way away from your relationship with God, and you will be lost. God doesn't spew the lukewarm out of his mouth because he hates them, but because he knows that when you are in the fence and on the fence and wishy-washy, there is no chance for you to change. So he either does something to make you more hot or something to make you cold, but either way, you can recognize the difference in the presence of God in your life. Hallelujah. But when Eleazar's hand was weary, he didn't let go of the sword and give up. It said he had gone so far to the point that his hand claved to the sword. It got stuck. It wouldn't let go. It wouldn't release. 
He was swiping and he didn't know, even though his hands were tired, everything had swollen up in his fingers and he just had to keep holding on to the sword. I'm here to tell you, life is going to get rough. Situations are going to get hard. Problems are going to come. But you've got to keep holding on. Hold on to the sword. And while I was stuck, he just decided, you know what? Might as well not walk away. I got the sword. I can still use it. Might as well just keep swiping at the Philistines and taking care of business. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, when you've done all you can do to stand, then stand therefore. Put the armor of the Lord upon yourself. Firmly place yourself. Hallelujah. And say, God, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to be encouraged by you. Whenever I get the chance to pray, I'm going to pray. Whenever I get the chance to read, I'm going to read. I'm going to bind you to my heart, and I'm never going to let you go. What is that sword in our lives? It's the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. Cling to God's Word because in it dwelleth life. Hallelujah. And life eternal. Hallelujah. Don't walk away oh, from the Word of God. Let it constantly be as frontlets between thine eyes. Reminders of the great delivering power that God has done in the past and that God will do in the future. He got it out of us that time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holding fast to Jesus means much more than just trying to be a Christian. It is a call to give this walk with Jesus everything you've got. Everything you've got. Hallelujah. And never, ever, ever. Letting go. Luke chapter 14, verse 33 says, hallelujah, if you can put that up there, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Hallelujah. Am I saying that you have to walk out of your house and stand in a tent somewhere and be all by yourself? No, that's not what I'm saying. You have to be willing to forsake anything that's going to hinder your relationship with God. You have to make sure that you are pushing out everything out of your way that is stopping you from being who God wants you to be and stopping you from being in right relationship with God. Because I tell you, if you don't, those things that you leave in your life will consume you. Hallelujah. Hold on to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Last thing I want to talk about is, is Paul. In chapter 27 of the book of Acts, we find that Paul was on a ship destined to see Caesar. Hallelujah. He, just, he, he was praying and he felt that there was a terrible storm coming. He said, listen, I heard and saw, received a testimony that this is going to be a bad deal. You're going to get caught in a storm if you go out on this. But they saw favorable wind. Everything seemed great. Sun was shining. Everything was good. There was a light breeze. The sails were easy to lift up and set. So they decided to go on their way. In the middle of them going on their way, the Euroclidon, the giant storm, giant force, turbulent wind uh, came in, and that ship uh, was shaking, running, going everywhere. They were throwing everything off just to stay afloat, uh, even the food and everything else. They were they at the at one point they were so they were so weary, so desirous that that that, that didn't see any hope that they were just gonna kill all the prison mates. Hallelujah. But another testimony came from Paul, and Paul said, Hallelujah, we're all going to be saved, but you got to stay on the ship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Although 
The ship that I'm going to be talking about right now is not one that's headed and for, destined for destruction. It is still a ship that you've got to stay on. That good old gospel ship. You've got to get on the ship. Repentance, baptism, infilling of the Holy Ghost. And you've got to stay on. No matter how much it rose. No matter how much it goes up. No matter how much it goes down. No matter how hard it gets. You've got to hold on. Because there's no salvation in any Anything else besides the precious name of Jesus. Sometimes it may seem so much easier to jump on that lifeboat and get off the ship and go somewhere else. There may be an island that seems a swimming distance away, but there are people, principalities, and powers waiting to devour your soul in those troubled waters. Don't turn to the right hand or to the left. Stay focused. Stay on the ship and get to where Jesus wants you to be. The same word, katecho, was used by Luke to describe how the crew on, Israel, on Paul's ship directed the boat to shore when they saw it. They were steadfast. Even though the storm was raging, even though the stream was small, even though everything wasn't going their way, they were fixed and focused exactly on where they needed to go, on exactly on the place that was going to make sure that their lives were saved. That's the same we must be. Let's all stand. He cut it. Hallelujah. The deceitfulness of sin would love to harden your heart and to make it feel like that there is something better out in this world. Something more that's going to provide you more satisfaction, more joy, more peace, more strength. If you just go out there and do it and go out there and live it. I'd say nowadays the most, the most prevalent of that is things that affect the mind that bring peace through, through use of drugs or activities. We have to stay away. We have to trust in the Lord. He is the only one that is going to bring the peace, the joy, and the strength that you so desperately desire. He is the only one that can bring you out of your situation and make your test a testimony. There is no one else that can do it. And we must hold on to the ship because I'm here to tell you when the waves are rolling and the storm is brewing and you don't have a good hold, you can be thrown off and then Oh, hallelujah. And you can ask anybody that's backslidden how hurtful, how harmful, how painful it is to get to the place where you can come back to the Lord. Hallelujah. I urge you, hold fast to the confidence and the hope that is in Christ Jesus. Hold fast to the victory that is in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These altars are open. I urge you, if you've never received the Holy Ghost, if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, if you've never repented of your sins, now is the day you can see, hear, and feel the hope and confidence that I've been talking about this entire time. Hallelujah. If you've been struggling with your walk with God and you've forgotten the joy of your salvation, these altars are open. God is more than happy to pour out a fresh and new anointing upon you to live lead you into a deeper and closer relationship with God. If situations are coming your way in life and you just need some more strength to hold on, oh, God is here. Hold fast to the testimony of the Lord Jesus. Hold on to what he's done and what he's doing and let God, hallelujah, bring you victory, hallelujah. These altars are open.
church, let's come down to this altar and worship the Lord together today. And draw near, rejoice in that ship as I am. God has led us into today.
Can we lift up praise together again? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We're singing. We're going to shout and sing. We ought to do that here. Amen. We, we don't say you're going to shout and sing over there. You won't do it here. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's a refreshing to just lift off those idiosyncrasies, those Adamic hindrances that we receive from our ancestors. Amen. And just worship the Lord freely in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And just bless and enjoy the gift that God gives to us in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had another thought I wanted to share with you about youth camp. We had confirmation of this. As far as they know, every child that didn't have the Holy Ghost got the Holy Ghost. 70-something, 70 73, I think. Amen. That's a first-hand report from someone that was there. So <laughs> they actually had bands for anybody that didn't have the Holy Ghost, and they cut every one of them off before it was over. Amen. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. That's fantastic, isn't it? That's, a, that's such a, a tremendous end-time miracle. Seventy-something young people, eight to ten, I think, all getting the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Talk about changing the world. That's going to change the world. Praise God, praise God. Amen. God is so good. Amen. I want to I wish I could dance around like that little fellow was doing here. Praise God, praise God. Amen. God is good to us. We love you all. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for worshiping. Thank you for loving God, serving him with all of our heart. Boy, is God speaking to us today. Amen. About holding fast. Hallelujah. Hang on to what God gave us and dig a little deeper. Praise God. Open the door of our hearts and God will flood us with his presence. Amen. Be in prayer for upcoming services. Don't forget about all the things coming up. Father's Day next Sunday, one of our, our second super Sundays of summer. <laughs> Hallelujah. A lot of S's going on there. We love you. God bless you. We're dismissed in Jesus' name.